Hey everyone, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Thanks for coming by to check out another video. You did read the title correctly. I am currently in eBay jail. If you haven't heard that term before, it's an informal colloquial term that refers to having part of or all of your account uh, suspended by eBay. And my specific situation is that I am unable temporarily to sell any new items i am unable to revise any existing items fortunately i am able to still sell items that are listed in my store and that's good because i did make a few sales yesterday so hopefully that will keep me going depending on how long this lasts it will last for a minimum of about 24 hours which is where we're at about this point i'm waiting for ebay to call me back in a few hours uh, to see if um, I could be granted a um, reprieve from this uh, or if it's going to last the full seven days. So hopefully it doesn't go that long, but I am prepared if it does. I'm going to go over the specific situation in just a moment, but first just a few general points. Uh, one is just my decision to make this video to begin with. I easily could have not made this video, not told anyone about what was going on here, but I felt to do that would be selling everyone who has subscribed to this channel very short because um, I have made the decision, uh, made the decision a long time ago when I started this channel that no matter what happens, good or bad, I am intent on sharing that with you. And certainly I have shared with you a lot of good. I've shared with you a lot of tips. I've shared with you a lot of times where I've made a great score or made a great sale. And I'm obviously going to continue to do that over time. But the notion that any business, I don't care if it's reselling on eBay or if it's a brick and mortar business that's completely unrelated to reselling, it is unrealistic to believe that or portray that it's all rainbows, butterflies, and unicorns. There are bad times that can happen, there's down times, there's emotional highs, and there's emotional lows. So, you know, just to take it outside of reselling, for example, if you own a restaurant, you could get a bad review, a bad health inspection, you could, um, you know, there could be a time where you lose your liquor license if you sold liquor, if you're not in the restaurant business and you're in a mall, the rent could jack, you know, could get jacked up you know, unexpectedly, and now you've got to reconfigure your business model all of a sudden, and you weren't planning on it, or you could get a fire or a flood or something like that. There's all sorts of things that can happen, not just even in business. Forget business for a second, just in real life. You know, I know a lot of people are used to watching things on Facebook and seeing everyone's lives there, and everything always looks like everything's perfect, but it's not. It's not. There's bad things that happen and we often don't get to see that side of it because people tend to hide it. Why? Because it's negative. People don't want to share the negative um, often and especially if it's anything that's embarrassing. Uh, and after all, you know, who wants to be in eBay jail? Now it's a little easier to put a video like this together if you feel that you are the victim and that you didn't do anything wrong and you basically just want to complain that this shouldn't be happening to you. Uh, however, in this instance, I am really just going to take responsibility for what happened and uh, hopefully pass on that information to you and that, you know, with the goal that hopefully you learn from this mistake and that you don't make it as well. And that's the other reason I made this video, because one of the items I'm going to talk about, is, uh, which is the basis of the problem here for me, is something I've talked about in a lot of other videos. And so I don't want anyone to see those uh, videos and, you know, think that, that, you know, if you ever saw that particular item, that you should pick it up and, and resell it. I want to at least have the opportunity to put this video up there so that people know, again, uh, to avoid this so you don't run into the problem I had. So let's go back into how this actually started last night, which was I had, at the time I was finished with my video, I did a little, some listings afterwards, I had 148 listings up. Now that might not sound like a lot, but for me, it's actually pretty good. 
a lot of my items have high ticket prices on them so I don't need to sell a ton of stuff to have a successful day I can make one or two sales like you know the other day I sold a comic book for $125 so I could get by with just selling a few things and, and, and be all right um, but I had that amount of items up and went to bed and just looked at my app really quick and saw that it said I had 142 items and I said that's odd I know I just had 148 right just a few minutes ago so I just kept refreshing the app and it still said 142 so uh, I said maybe this is one of eBay's glitches I'm not, I don't get this so I go over to my email to see if there's any explanation there and sure enough I see a message from eBay that has to deal with the Vero program now a lot of people who are new have never heard of this before I am well aware of it it is the uh, verified rights ownership program It has to do with intellectual property and basically um, what it is usually used for is that if a company typically a famous brand uh, believes that a product of theirs is being sold inappropriately on eBay they will notify eBay and when they do that eBay must take your listings down let me repeat that eBay must take your listings down if eBay does not take the listings down regardless of whether or not that claim is initially true or false eBay puts themselves at risk for being sued so this really is a legal issue for eBay calling customer service about it to try to get the um, your listings back up in terms of the ones that were taken down that is not going to be successful now there are ways that you can um, fight a Vero claim against you some people call them Vero takedowns if you believe that it's not legitimate and I know there are people watching this who have had this happen to them before and have successfully fought it and had it reversed and there's ways to do that there's videos about that there's online tutorials about that I'm not going to go into that because in this instance the Vero claim is legitimate but there are instances you should be aware of where a competitor of yours may falsely file a Vero claim against you if they have rights as a distributor for a company and feel your interfere your 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 price or your product is interfering with their sales they could falsely and abusively file a Vero claim against you to get your items taken down so it can be abused so you have to be aware of that you have to look into who exactly it is that is reporting you um, is it the actual company or is it some third party if it's a third party you um, you know you might be on better grounds to try to fight it if you believe that your product is completely legitimate now as just an aside I do want to point out that with regards to intellectual property rights and I'll put this link here down below in the description section but uh, something that's interesting about it look at this someone's using the descriptions from my listings word for word what can I do to stop them uh, you know you should be aware of that if you copy directly copy someone else's description from their listing and just plop it into yours which a lot of people do you technically could get reported for that and you could wind up in eBay jail as well so please don't do that you know make sure you're modifying some of the text if you're looking at something as a template don't just directly copy word for word something that somebody else put in their listing but that that's just a little aside about intellectual property um, let's get into my specific situation in terms of what happened and as you could probably tell if you've been looking at these tabs it has to do with my Jack Daniel signs and I know Aaron's probably watching this and probably saying I told you so um, and you know I don't know if in terms of how this actually got to Jack Daniels if someone um, reported me to Jack Daniels uh, or if Jack Daniels as the company themselves actually just found this I, I, I really believe that Jack Daniels just saw it as a new listing because I recently made a video of how I made a huge Jack Daniels score with some signs and I took some pictures I put them up and the day that I put up those new signs 
is when and that's when those you know your items get the maximum visibility is when you put it up as a new listing i believe that someone uh, either from jack daniels or someone who um, just either just saw it just as a customer and notified them about it got it to their attention so that they fire filed a viral complaint now let me take you back to the history of my involvement with these signs uh the way it started was i was at the flea market a let's say a few months ago beginning of the summer and one of my first finds was this sign now i asked the guy where he got it from he said he got it from an auction and he was selling it for ten dollars now you could see here it's a pretty risque sign this is my top seller or was my top seller from the jack daniel sign now it is a three-in-one sign but this blonde is what does sell the sign now there are other parts of the sign though it also has uh, Harley Davidson in it and you can see here it says celebrate Jack's birthday buy any bottle from the Jack Daniels family for a chance to win a Harley Davidson now as a step back I am very well aware of the Vero program with eBay I know about it I heard stories of people whose accounts have been temporarily taken down um, I know of certain companies in which you don't really want to list anything. Otterbox is a great example of one. Uh, Minecraft is another that could go after you and, and take you down. So, um, you know, if they feel that your your item that you're listing is not legitimate. So uh, Harley Davidson, by the way, is another one that has gone after people. So, you know, you definitely have to be careful that your item is legitimate. Now, for me, when I first saw this sign and I saw this contest aspect of it that to me made me feel there was some legitimacy to it because it's talking about a contest i said you know what that kind of makes sense two famous brands jack daniels and harley would you know associate with them, themselves with one another does not look like a cheap sign it's sealed you know it's in the original packaging um you know does not look poorly made now it is made in china which can be a red flag because China does make a lot of counterfeit products, but China also unfortunately makes almost everything that we have. So whether it's counterfeit or not, usually uh, most items that we have are made in China. So that in and of itself, you know, is not something that would immediately tell me, well, this is not a legitimate product. So I, I hemmed it hot initially as to whether I should purchase this because I didn't know, you know, it's a big sign. I got to ship it. How much can I really make off of it? So I listed it for $74.99 just to, as kind of just as a whim. And I was shocked when it sold. And I said, my goodness, someone actually paid $75 for this sign. I only paid $10 for it. Wow. I wish I had more of these signs. Uh, but the person that I purchased it from, he only um, he only had the one, so I didn't know if I'd ever see it again. So fast forward a few weeks, and I'm at the flea market again, and I run into somebody else who not only has this sign, but he also has this one here. This is Jack Daniels with a brunette on top of it, and it's pool table. They don't all have girls, so this is one that's Jack Daniels Harley, and that's what it is. It's all Jack Daniels Hardy. It's Friday, you know, it, but there's no girls involved in this one. So some of them are more risque than others. And when I saw it, I said, "Great, I could get another one of these signs, and I could try to sell it." So I bought it and sold it, and then I bought this one and I sold it, and I bought this one and I sold it. Now, this one again. No concerns of mine that this was legitimate because, again, looks very well made, looks professionally made, looks completely legit, makes sense to me that Jack Daniels and Harley would be together. Now, not really a big red flag to me that there's a girl wearing a thong with a cowboy hat looking back because it is Jack Daniels and it is Harley and, you know, it, they're both kind of, you know, edgy popular pop culture brand so it wouldn't surprise me to see something like that associated with it now here's where things kind of go to the point where i should have known better 
but when you're doing well with these signs like this and you're selling them for 55 to 75 bucks a clip you tend to try to rationalize things in your mind and say well maybe 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 but um, this one here you could see now it did take me kind of by surprise at first when I saw these marijuana leaves here so you're thinking wow really you know Jack Daniels allowed for their sign to have marijuana leaves on it that's kind of interesting then again you know, and here's the point where you kind of argue with yourself and you kind of rationalize it and you say, well, maybe there's something. To I mean, here too, if we don't want to have the, I know there's a lot of women watching this. So I don't want to just, you know, have this lady in the thong staring at you for the whole time. So uh, I'll just put this up for a second. But, you know, we're in a day and age where there's definitely more discussion. There's more openness about marijuana and medical marijuana and the use of marijuana. Uh, some states that, you know, even allow recreational um, use of marijuana and so um, even in New York State you can get uh, medical marijuana so uh, you know which is where I live so um, I looked up because Aaron who watches this channel asked me and said hey you know is that a legitimate Jack Daniel sign because I didn't know that they supported you know marijuana use and I said to myself well you know they probably don't I said but I you know I look. I looked it up and I didn't see anything one way or the other on it. I didn't see anything where Jack Daniels came out with any kind of statement, uh, or that they, you know, said anything one way or the other on it. So uh, I just kind of ignored it and just kind of put my head in the sand and said to myself, you know what? This has been selling for now since the beginning of the summer. We're at the end of the summer. It's been up there for a whole season. Like these three are my originals. I've had these bread and butter, been selling for a long time. And I've not had any problem, have not had any issue with it. So I just figured it was okay if, you know, if the company was monitoring these things that, um, you know, I probably would have heard something by now if they had a problem with it. So that's just explaining to you kind of what my logic was and kind of rationalizing this. While in the back of my head, kind of saying... With this one, not the other ones, but with this one saying, well, hmm, that is a little, is a little, a little strange. Uh, then, now I don't have them up here because they took the listings down, but if you go back to my prior video on the Jack Daniels score, I found two other types of signs. Now, one of them is very similar to this one here. It's a Jack Daniels Harley sign and it has a skeleton riding the Harley Davidson. But then there was, um, there were some marijuana plants in that one. Uh, so that one does make a little different from this. And then there was another one with a girl in it and the girl did not have a thong on it, uh, on her. Well, one part she did, but another part she, um, was bare, uh, from behind. So those were a little edgier, I would say. And so those are the two that I put up and like I said, less than 24 hours, I get notified that, um, I have this Vero violation trademark infringement from Jack Daniels. Now, um, you know, this is where I say, you know, going back, thinking about it in retrospect, um, you know, should I have known better, especially with this sign and especially with the two that I bought recently? Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely should have. Um, but you know, I'm human and, um, you know, from how this whole thing originated and how this has been going on for several months, that's, uh, you know, kind of how I just justify, just keep going on with it and, um, you know, open to just have continued success with it. But that's obviously not going to be the case. Um, you can understand from a business perspective, um, if Jack Daniels does not want to be associated with this type of stuff. Um, they don't want their brand out there with uh, marijuana leaves next to it or, um, you know, girls in thongs maybe. So um, for that reason, they filed a Vero complaint. And I totally understand that, obviously respect that, and will not be relisting these signs. Uh, I do have some extra ones, and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those. I obviously can't list them up for sale on eBay. And I'm not going to be, you know, putting them up on Mercari or anything like that. So I'm really just not sure what the heck to do with them. If anyone has any ideas, uh, certainly let me know in the comments section. 
um, but I do have a bunch of them left. Fortunately, I'm still in profit for even for the ones that I have that are extra because you could see for each one of these signs, I do make a nice, I did make a nice return on investment on it. So it's time to um, move on to other things and um, you know get back to you know my real bread and butter, which is my other you know antiques and my comic books and that sort of stuff, and just put this behind me. Um, but it's going to take some time. Uh, I hopefully, hopefully not too much more time. Hopefully this is all done by the end of the, the uh, by the end of the day today, or even within a few hours. But it can happen for seven, uh, can go on for seven days. Now, before I go into what the next, if it does last for seven days, what to kind of do during that time frame, I, I just want to let you know that I did look into who exactly did file this complaint, and it literally was. The, the, the parent company of Jack Daniels. They're the ones that um, complained about it and put in the Vero violation uh, report. Now, I could counter that, but it would be a false um, countering. Um, and if I did that, then Jack Daniels has the right to sue me or any other company would have the right to sue you. So, that's obviously not a route that I would want to go. There's no basis in, in filing any type of counterclaim, so I'm not going to do that. But again, you can file a counterclaim if you do believe that you were wrongfully targeted with a um, with a Vero complaint. So, uh, in terms of what to do over the next seven days, uh, there's if it, if it does last that long, there are lots of things to do during that time. Fortunately, like I said, items will hopefully still be selling. Um, I'll just document for you in these videos what I'm doing during this time. And, uh, you know, there's lots of things you could do. There's um, lots of things, for example, that I have to do in terms of organiz or organizing inventory. There's some accounting work that I'm behind on. And there's, frankly, just some other things that have nothing to do with reselling that, um, you know, that I could do during that time frame. So uh, I'll just make the most of it and then bounce back and learn from this. I think the lesson that I would pass on is one, um, if, if on any level you do feel kind of in your gut that there might not be something right about what it is that you have that you're selling, um, look into it a little bit more. Um, I guess I could have called the Jack Daniels company and asked them about the signs. I mean, I'm not sure how that would have worked out. Um, I'm not sure how easy they are to reach or anything like that, but that's uh, one possibility, one thing I could have done um, before investing in more of them. So, um, but whatever the case may be in your situation, um, if someone raises a concern to you about it, or if someone, um, or just even in your own mind, if you're kind of doubting the authenticity of something, um, you know, look into it a little bit more. Uh, because eventually it's uh, going to catch up to you as it did here in this instance. So, um, I myself, uh, like I said, plan on learning from this experience and moving forward and just being extra careful and extra cautious in terms of any kind of brand name items that I have listed for sale. Um, you know, again, part of the reason that I was somewhat hesitant in putting up this video is because I really do try to, on this channel, promote best selling practices for eBay and this actually is uh, obviously not that and not a shining moment for me but um, you know like I said I'm human mistakes happen and you just have to own it and just move forwards uh, you're you're not going to be successful if you don't make mistakes learn from them and persevere through them and uh, that's what I'm going to do here uh, fortunately it's temporary seven days is if it does go that long is brief in the big scheme of things and could be a lot worse so just going to move onwards and upwards from here if you have any comments and questions just let me know uh, i appreciate hearing from you uh, if you like the video please make sure you hit the like button also uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and uh, come by the Facebook group, Facebook Reselling Resource Center that I run. The link to that's down below. Follow me on Instagram. That's at Primetime Treasure. And I'll see you all back in the next video, everyone. Hopefully I'm reinstated by then. We'll see. Take care.